Many legends have been spoken, songs have been sung, yet no one has ever tried to find out what really happened to us. Are we myths, or are we hiding among you trying to find our purpose in this new world? Each time I recover my past life memories, I often feel the urge to climb the top of the tallest mountain and shout my lungs out. The pain is unbearable. Every time I have to relive the horrors of my past, I have to remember that spell. Without it, my mind keeps jumping from one place to another. Many, many eons ago, there was a world divided into four nations. These nations always had conflicts, and they had dominion over many territories. The first nation was called Anukas, also known as the Burning Island. The land was very hot to a point that during night, the ground would birth flames like a fiery flower that blooms at night. It was a beautiful place, at least to those that lived there. The nation of Anukis was ruled by a king named Denom, an ancient name which meant flaming beast. Lord Denham was a giant in height with red and white eyes. When you met his eyes, you could feel every bone in your body burning. It is one of the reasons why every poor soul that finds themselves before his burning presence often opt to avoid eye contact. The second nation was called Asimaipotu, also known as the Botanical Forest. It was a peaceful nation with naturally beautiful plants, large forests, and ancient animals living together with humans. There were no fights nor crimes in that nation. The queen's rule was unmatched, cruel, and just. It was a place every creature would dream to visit. Well, if you could overlook the fact that all males were either turned into trees or animals and only permitted to transform back to their human form on a full moon. The land was more secluded they did not allow people from other nations to enter their territories without special permission from the authorities. It was led by a queen named Enelada. In ancient Akimapotion, it meant nature empress. She was the most beautiful person that you would ever meet. Her beauty could blind every living being who dared to gaze upon her. Each and every one who claimed to have seen her described her differently like she was with many faces. The same was said about my queen. The third nation was called Asimalak, also known as Land of Ice. If Ice Age and a cold front had a baby girl, it would have been named Asimalak. This land had buildings made out of ice. Snow was like their sun. I went there a few times. As beautiful as it looked, I would have preferred to be turned into some cute owl in Asimaipotu if the visits were by choice. It was ruled by a princess named Ibanez, she was a young, beautiful lady full of light and life. When she was around her people, joy and happiness would fill their hearts. Her presence brought light into the darkest and coldest parts of the land. Even the terminally ill would suddenly be cured when in her presence. The fourth nation was called Irotagarap, also known as Land of the Dead. I have chills in my spine even when thinking about it. The survival of the fittest was the only rule that matters in this territories. The land of Irotagarap was filled with vicious monsters and witches. It was ruled by a man called Elucard. Those who heard of him called him the beast of worst nightmares. If nightmares were the scariest thing you could ever encounter in dreams, then he was the thing that nightmares were afraid of. Those who saw him and lived to tell the tale called him Durnagard. In the common language, it meant ruler of the dark beasts. For where he walks, darkness and all its creatures follows. All nations lived in harmony for decades until one night, the prince of Enukes killed one of the royal underground beasts of Irotagarap. The king of Irotagarap was furious, as if fury was not his daily emotion. His malicious smile could not stay hidden. His thirst for war was justified by this incident. Tensions were sky high between the two nations. Few dark nights later, all the leaders of the four nations decided to hold a summit to resolve the conflicts of Enukes and Irotagarap. Despite their differences, some leaders did not wish for an all-out war with their enemies. An all-out war would mean that it would leave them vulnerable to attacks from other nations and loose most of its territories. The summit were to be held at the border between the four nations. It was said that the past summits had resulted in more conflicts, so they decided that each leader should bring along with them no more than two guards for protection. The guards were the second most powerful beings in their nations after their ruler. They had one rule, 
to protect their leader at all costs. If the leader died on their watch, they would also die because their oath was made by blood magic. The king of Enukes Denam brought two men. One was called Elak, also known as Flaming Echo. He wore red leather armor, dark brown eyes full of despair, average height, and long red hair. He was so fast that his enemies only heard the echoes of blazing fire after he cut them with his sword. The other man was called Cider, also known as Pyro. Giant-like features, same built as Lord Denim, wearing gold armor that looked like it has seen more battles. He had a dark red short hair and fiery eyes as if his eyes were burning. Cider could start and command fire with his hands. Some said that he burned his neighbor's dog when he was six years old while trying to feed it. Then he burned his school when he was 15 years old and burned his girlfriend's house when she dumped him. The evidence of this stories were never confirmed, but he always looked like a young, troubled giant. Queen Enelada of Asimaipotu brought with her two women. They were so beautiful that the kings demanded them to cover their faces to avoid distraction. It is said that all women of Asimaipotu are extremely beautiful, and the queen is beyond the definition of beauty. One of the women was called Osin. She was tall, but not tall enough to mistake her for a giant. Her dark green and black hair floated as if the wind was pulled towards her against its will. Blue eyes like an ocean, you would swear that you have seen a boat floating in her eyes. She wore black armor made out of leaves and roots. She was the sweetest person that you could ever meet. Yet there were rumors that when she was ten years old, she decapitated hundred men who attacked her village. The other women was called Arok, short in statue, brown braided hair which looked like it is made for battle. Her eyes were black like the unending night with a glimpse of hope. She had the power to command the earth to her will. Some said that she split open a mountain because she was sad that her puppy died. Princess Ibanez of Asimalok came with a man and a young girl. The young girl was called Teen, also known as the Shadow Twin. She was the same height as the princess. She wore blue armor, blue icy afro hair, black and white eyes, dark skin, and an attitude of a teenager. It is rumored that she is a shadow traveler. She could disappear and appear in any place with shadows. The man was called Elisha, average height. He wore white glacier armor and held a sword in his left hand ready to intercept any attack. No one has ever seen any guard from Axamalok fight, but it is said that they possess amazing and terrifying powers. The king of Irotagarap Elucard came with a witch and a beast. The beast was called Irosik Lord of Skies, and the witch was called Kaina, also known as the Red Hair Grand Witch. Their appearance were blurry, shadowy, and very alarming. Not even me with my unparalleled power could see their faces then. The summit was about peace and order, to prevent Anukas and Irotagarap from going to war, but things did not go as foreseen. During the talks, the king of Irotagarap attacked the king of Anukas, and even though the queen of Asimaipotu stopped the fight before it could go any further, words were spoken, words of war and darkness swallowed the day. The end as we know it was whispering.